If there's one bit of protection we recommend you always wear when riding, it's one of these. If you don't, other mountain bikers are going to give you a load of grief and you're also putting yourself in danger because if you go over the handlebars and land on your head, you're looking at a concussion, fractured skull or worse. Like most things, there's loads of helmets on the market, but for trail riding, you want something like this. This is the Gyro Chronicle. It has extended rear coverage, but there's still plenty of ventilation to keep you cool on a hard ride. It also has a MIPS liner inside, and there's a couple of other trail features we're gonna look at in a bit more detail. All helmets are made from expanded polystyrene, or EPS for short. This stuff is designed to absorb the force of the impact by compacting. It's a bit like the crumple zones in your car. The thing is about EPS, once it's crumpled, it doesn't spring back, which is why you should replace your helmet if you have a big accident. However, some manufacturers mix an elastomer into the EPS to help it recover from smaller impacts. We're also starting to see helmets using a dual density EPS with hard and soft layers. The idea being the soft EPS absorbs smaller impacts with the hard stuff kicking in when things get really serious. Because the EPS is a foam, it can dent easily. So to protect it, it's covered with a thin plastic called a microshell. This is often several pieces, and on some designs, it also wraps under the bottom of the helmet to add extra protection in this high wear area. This is called bottom wrapping, and I'm only mentioning it because it's actually a more expensive process and you only see it on high-end helmets. Obviously, a totally solid shell would offer the most protection, but when you're riding off-road, you need to cool down, so most helmets come with vents. Generally speaking, the more vents the better, but the shape and position of the vents is also a key consideration. What you're looking for is good distribution of venting and a straight line front to back so that the air can channel over your scalp and cool you down. EPS offers a high level of protection, but a lot of the latest helmets also feature MIPS. This multi-directional impact protection system is basically an internal plastic liner that slides at the moment of impact, helping reduce rotational brain injuries from glancing blows. It does add weight and cost more, which is why you don't see it on cheaper helmets, but it's another layer of protection. On the back of most helmets, you'll see this. Some people call it a retention device. Some people call it a fit system. It's actually both. It extends down at the back, so holds the helmet securely on your head, and it's also adjustable for size. Most systems use a rotating dial, which allows you to adjust the fit with one hand while riding. Why is that important? Well, you might come into a really rocky section and that can cause the helmet to bounce all over the place. Once you get to a smoother trail or a climb, you can then loosen it off again. All helmets get padding. This is for comfort and to absorb sweat. The thicker the padding, the more sweat it will absorb. But to allow this to evaporate and to help channel air over your scalp, a lot of new pads now feature little channels and cutaways formed into the surface. Some helmet pads are also impregnated with metallic particles to help reduce odour, but you'll still need to wash them. When you do that, a one-piece pad is better than lots of little pieces, which can easily get lost in the washing machine. This bit is the peak or visor, and on most modern trail helmets, it should be adjustable, so you can get it out of the way when you're riding along. And when I say adjustable, it has to be more than a couple of millimetres. And there's no point tilting it out of the way if it falls down again. It needs a solid attachment system. On some helmets, the visor tilts up so far you can actually park your goggles underneath. Why is this a good thing? Well, it allows you to push them out of the way on a climb so you don't get any condensation, but then you can pull them back down quickly and easily for the following descent. To keep the goggle strap in place, some helmets have a channel around the side, and on some, there's even a little clip at the back. A lot of new helmets also come with integrated accessory mounts, so you can clip on a GoPro or a headlight. There's also a couple of helmets available now that allow you to attach a chin bar. This is a Bell Super, and you can buy it like this, or with a chin bar attached. The chin bar is also available aftermarket, so if you find yourself riding harder or taking more risks, you can upgrade at a later date. Generally speaking, the more features a helmet has, the more expensive it is but with the advent of MIPS and other systems, helmets are more protective than ever. 
But that doesn't matter a jot if you don't wear it. Mountain biking is unpredictable and it can catch you out. So when you've bought your new helmet, make sure you wear it.